Yo, yo, yo. Today I am very excited to give you this fire effect, uh, fire logo effect in Cinema 4D. Uh, I've been working very hard. I, I know you said working like a German, but I've been working really hard on um, gaining skill in all these programs, motion graphics, visual effects, things like that. And animation is something I struggle with, but I'm pretty, I'm getting close to the point where some of the stuff is becoming easy. It's not just pain after pain, but yeah. I've been learning liquids and I've also been learning fire effects and I thought I would show you guys fire effects with turbulence FD plugin, which you'll need and magic preview I'm going to be using. You don't really need it. You can uh, do your own render previews your own way, but those are the plugins I'm going to be using and Cinema 4D of course, but yeah, there are some tutorials on this uh, plugin, but I've I didn't, there wasn't an easy quick way of just turning something to fire and getting it done. And I thought I could summarize that up for you because I've been spending like 10, 15 hours a day learning a bunch of stuff. And this is one of the things that took me a while to get the hang of. So I'm gonna get into the tutorial and I'm gonna show you what the fire looks like over here. Um, this is what a bit of the fire will look like and the liquids I've been doing. This is for my next edit. I've been spent, I've spent at least a hundred hours on this. This is all the music I've been trying that's in this project. I've been trying all these different musics just for this one edit. I've gone through about 300 of them and this is the liquid I've been doing. I could do a tutorial on this, but I don't know enough to, this is more liquid. I don't know enough yet to show you that, but yeah, for the fire, what you'll need is, it depends on what you want to turn to fire. You can use a cube sphere, whatever, but if you want to use a logo, um, I'm going to use a illustrator vector file, a vector path. And to import that, you can drag it in. I would suggest doing that before you set up your project. But if you have set up your project ready, you can just merge it with that and then it won't mess up your project settings. So we're gonna start off by setting up, uh, we're gonna extrude this first. We're gonna put the logo path in there. Object, and I'm gonna just expand this to 200, go fillet cap, fillet cap. 25. Now the numbers don't necessarily matter here. It depends on how you want it to look. If it looks around here, then it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, obviously the size of your path can depend on how it will look as well. So uh, I'm going to go to mesh, axis center, and just tick all of those. And if it doesn't actually go to the center, just untick points to center and then it should go to if, around the center. It doesn't go perfectly at the center, but I guess that's it's okay for now. Then I'm just gonna zero this out, enter. So it's now in the middle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go plugins, draw set, turbulence. And I said we we're gonna set up our project yet. We haven't done that. <laughs> Let's just do this quickly. Um, what you wanna do is you can either scale it down that way um, what I prefer to do is uh, do this 0 0.1, paste, 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 um, 0.3, paste, 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 oh, 0 0.03, sorry, 0 0.03. And you just want to make sure it's inside of this container over here, because if it's outside the container, any simulations won't necessarily be uh, out there. And the reason why I did that is because you, this axis isn't exactly the center. I haven't really figured out how to get it there. Like it's not really a big issue right now. So I haven't really gone through the um, effort of going through that. Um, so if you just scale it down this way, you won't have to recenter it. You won't have to recenter the axis after scaling. So these two are on the center, so that's fine. What we're gonna do now is set up our project. This is very important to do first. So depends on the FPS you want, but for the tutorial sake, I'm going to use 25 FPS um, just so I don't have to simulate as much. I'm going to try not to bump this camera and I just hit my chest there. So it's so a three second clip at 25 frames per second, which is fine. The key interpolation, I'm going to turn that to linear uh, just because I don't want it to. Uh, you can go Google that if you want to know what that does. 
I'm gonna go into my view settings. I'm going to go view and change this opacity here to 40%. And then I'm gonna use my um, aspect ratio that I've been using for my edit recently, uh, which is 2.743. And that just allows me to not render as much as I need to. Um, that for the sake of the tutorial, I don't wanna render more than I need to. So we're gonna have the view around here. Then we're gonna set up our camera. We're gonna hide this quickly from the editor view. We're gonna go into our Cinema 4D tags target and we're just gonna drag this in there. So now that it doesn't matter where I'm zoomed, it will always focus on the center and that's a good thing to have. Um, I'm just going to keyframe it because I don't want this camera to move from here. Maybe zoom it out a bit and then keyframe it. And I was setting up my project settings and I got distracted again, but um, <laughs> as long as you follow what I'm doing, it should be fine. Now we're going to go and drag in a floor, bring the floor somewhere below this, just below, I guess. And then we are going to go and do our project settings finally. Um, we're gonna go now. I'm gonna use a physical render for this. I'm not gonna explain everything I'm doing in the physical render because that's for you to go find out. As I said, I've been spending hours and hours and hours and hours on this stuff per day, and for me to explain it in a 30 minute, 15 to 30 minute tutorial is just not gonna happen. So, we're gonna go ambient inclusion, physical. And to make it easy on yourself, just switch the sampling to automatic and then the lower the threshold is, the better the quality. So if you want to do render test, just crank it up to 100. It'll go a lot faster, but it won't look as good, but it'll look good enough to notice your animation to see if your animation's fine. And then just crank it down to 20% if you want really good quality, maybe 15 if you want max quality. And 10 is just pushing it, 10 and below is just gonna push it by a lot, but it depends on your scene as well and if you want to control individual things like if your blurriness is bad but everything else is fine just crank this up um crank these subdivisions up to like four it'll, get, it'll look a lot better six it'll look even better eight probably past eight it'll look as best as it can it depends you have to do your own tests and yeah we're gonna use uh 20 for this because i have this plugin called magic preview which is a really nice plugin for render previews. It gives you really quite nice quality in a fast time. So now what we need to do is we need to go here, PNG, untick include sound and 16 bits. And I think that's all. Oh, change this frame rate to 25. Well, for me, I'm doing that. If you're doing 60 FPS, then Make it whatever you want it to be. You can do motion. Mm, that's for some. That's that has nothing to do with this. Okay. <laughs> um. Now for the actual simulation part, I think we should texture these first and then do the simulations. I'm gonna add a texture here. We're gonna call this logo. Now you're gonna go and see all my nice files over here. Uh, I'm just gonna use any random texture. For the sake of this, you can go find your own texture. Then I'm gonna go copy channel. I'm already getting tired. I haven't done a tutorial in a while. <laughs> I'm not trained to this. And go into your bump and stick it, paste it. And then I'm just gonna crank this up to 50%. And reflectant, I'm gonna add reflectant um, Fernal or Fresnel, however you want to say it. I'm just, I the first way I heard it was Fernal. So from, now, from then I've just been saying Fernal. And I guess that's okay. Um, for the floor, we're gonna do, oops, no, it's not duplicated yet. Let's go into this here. We're gonna go cubic, seamless. Then we're gonna duplicate it and call this one floor. And for the floor, we are going to go multiply, change this to a black. Uh, I, gu I guess we don't actually need the texture here. We can just uh, clear and then for the floor, we're just gonna drag this onto the floor. And then what we're going to do is uh, spot. I'm not doing this with my headphones on, so if the, if the I'm not hearing the messages, so if they're annoying, I'm sorry. 
um, when I do tutorials with my headphones on, I get frustrated because they're annoying to have on for a long time, and then I end up not wanting to even upload this thing. So I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying here. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do a very orangish light. Um, careful not to add shadows on this light because if you have shadows in your fire simulation, it's gonna take a long time to render. But it's and you won't really notice much. But it's your choice to do. And I think that's everything apart from our actual fire. Um, your scene is actually really important. Don't don't uh, think it's not. So we're gonna call this tutorial. Oh, I've done this already. Yeah, I did try to do this earlier, um, a few days ago, and then I got over it, but I'm doing it again. <laughs> um, I think everything's set up fine. Now for the actual uh, simulation, here's where you want to play close attention. Um, we're going to make this around 150. You can go Google uh, different ways of doing this as well if you want to, but if you want it to look like mine, I've been playing around with this thing for a long time, so this is just the way I've seen it work. I'm going to change this voxel size to 0.5. We're going to go and add a emitter, Topian and Safety emitter. We're going to change the temperature value to one. And as you can see, the emitter goes off the logo. So it will affect any object that the emitter tag is on. Then you want to go and make sure you have a place to put your caches because it does take up um, sometimes gigs of space. I have simulations that take up like 11 gigs space. Uh, depends on how long your simulation is and the detail in it and stuff. Um, but yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what this actual scene looks like without the fire. Um, plugins. This is from my other project where I had, let me just, um, as you can, I was doing liquid renders then. Let me just change this to a whitish, lighter color, so I can actually see where my borders are. I like to make this around the same size of what you're actually going to see in the final render, so that I can have a better view. I think it's already set that way. But this is what it looks like. You don't really see much at all, I don't think. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into our simulation. The simulation tag is where you'll have all your um, it's basically what you'll do, be doing, you'll be playing around with most. Um, there are pages where it explains what all these things do, but if you want to do what I did, go to timing. If you want a slow motion one, you can just turn this down to 50% or 75%. Um, I'm going to keep it on 75. Then velocity, leave that. Wind, uh, you don't, you don't need that. Uh, velocity, you're going to change that to 15. Turbulence, we're going to change that to 30. And I think the, tur the turbulence and the velocity are really where you notice the differences in animation and how uh, turbulent it is. Um, how it can either look really smooth or really um, bumpy. Not, not like in bad quality, but um, more violent if you turn these things, if you turn these two up. Um, so if you want to know how to make it look um, smooth and stuff, I would just mess with these two. And for the temperature, um, depends on how you want how you want your thing to go. Um, usually, if you turn your buoyancy up to like 60, it will go up even higher. Um, but your cooling is sort of this sort of the same thing. If you turn up your cooling down by to like 10%, if you turn it up to like 10%, then it'll sort of cool off quicker. So it will go a bit lower. So these two basically turn it um, make it go up and down. Um, it could go up, but it, it determines how high it will be. Um, they're not; these aren't necessarily the. They're not necessarily their functions. I think there are other um, things inside of this turbulence FD which are supposed to control that, but you can control that through um, those tools over there. And what we're going to go and do is we're going to change this to none, and then we're going to go into our renderer. Um, so we've done our simulation. Those, that's all you really need to do. Turbulence, velocity, um, and temperature. In our render, um, this is basically the color corrector of the fire. So I'm just going to turn this down to around there-ish. Uh, this is usually the best look for me for the fire. And we're not going to do smoke because that just increases around time. And 
um, smoke is only a minor difference. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate it. So we're going to save it. We're going to go plugins, um, simulation window. And you want to use a graphics card if you have a good one. And I'm just making sure everything in here is fine. I think, uh, I think everything's fine actually. Clip load 1000. Uh, velocity, I think I didn't really do much with that either. Um, viewport, yeah, I think everything's fine. So now we're going to simulate it. And the reason why I turned this preview mode off is because if it's, uh, it can crash, depending on your PC. But just for, in case you have a bad PC, I turned that off for you guys so it doesn't crash. So you don't see anything now, but once it's done, and you can also see how much space is taking up. Um, but if you delete, uh, you can delete the cache and stuff if you don't have a lot of space or want to get rid of it and stuff like that. So just keep in mind it takes up space and yeah. It's only a gig though. If you have a lot of space then you'll be fine. So this is the simulation over here. Turns to fire. Um, and if you just want to see the fire, Oh, that's not the wrong one. That's not the right one, my bad. Uh, if you just want to see the fire, you just go to fire. And this is basically what the fire is doing. And then if you want to see the smoke, this is what the smoke is doing. And then this is um, nothing. This is basically just showing the heat. The blue is the cooler, the cooler areas, and that's the, dot, the hotter areas. And it emits off your actual objects, so you can make really cool um, logo animations and stuff like that. And this is what it looks like. <coughs> P. This is what it looks like. Now, I really struggled with why it was looking so weird. I'm just gonna go check why it looks uh, so weird because when I did this earlier, it was fine. But then, why is global lumin illumination and stuff tick now? Oh, let me just close that quickly. Uh, let me just do this quick. Uh, P, P. Okay, cool. PNG. Yeah, when I did this um, earlier, it looked fine. And then as soon as I tried to do the tutorial, it just looked really bad. And I didn't really know why. And I'm gonna go figure that out now because it, it should look better than this. And I'm just gonna go figure out maybe it's my lighting or what that's making it um, look like this. Okay, so I had to go and do a couple of things. Um, I'm not sure exactly why in all my other projects uh, the, the fire looks a lot cleaner, I would say. Um, let me just get a zoomed in view here. It just looks so much cleaner and, um, not as, it looks very edgy and, uh, rough around the edges in this project, but see here, it looks a bit better. Maybe it was just, I was far away from it. So this is what the fire would look like, but I had to go and do a couple of things first. Uh, I realized that my textures were the, uh, one of the main problems. Uh, the color I didn't change. The reflectant, I just changed the brightness up to 50 here. Then I also added an environment map. Um, you can go find some HDRIs. I'm basically self-lighting this object and I don't need any other external things in the scene to light it. So I'm just self-lighting it with a free HDRI environment map that I have. I changed it to multiply and turn the strength down to about 10%. It gives a nice reflections inside here, as you can see. And then the bump, I just changed it to the steel texture, which is, looks like that. Uh, it's a seamless steel texture you can find online. And then I just turned the strength down to 50% so it wasn't as harsh. And then on the floor, I turned this reflectant down to 
20% and then just used a different texture for this as well, which you can find textures online, which look like that. And that's all I, I did for the textures. For the simulation, I don't think I changed anything. Um, I didn't change anything for the simulation. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think I changed anything else to be honest, but here I think it looks pretty fine, but you can go play around with it, um, get it the way you want to look like. Obviously this is just still image for the actual animation is what takes a while to get to um, used to. Um, but basically if you want it to go slower, you just go and turn this down. And if you, and if you want the, uh, the way it simulates and animates, you just want to change the velocity and turbulence. And that's pretty much all you'll need. And this is just for the basics, of course. Um, there are pretty advanced um, ways of using this, uh, which takes other tutorials and stuff to do. But yeah, if you want smoke, if you want to see what smoke looks like, change this to temperature. I'm just gonna drag. I'm gonna make this 0.1. Apparently, this speeds up render time. Um, and change the thickness to about 50. And then run it through again. Well, I was supposed to use the magic preview, and this is why we use that because <laughs> this takes a long time. Um, magic preview. Crank that up, and yeah, this is what it should look like. Um, there's different things you can do though. So you could do explosions. You could do um, a lot of nice fire effects. Um, what I'm working on right now is remapping a scene in Cinema 4D and then using effects to composite over footage over remapped footage and then I just uh, add that onto footage and then you could do things like I could do a lot of really cool stuff like that but it's, it's something that I want to learn I haven't learned it yet but I'm busy struggling with it right now and that's what um, I'm trying to do this took 22 seconds for her to render and I'm tired because I've been spending hours and hours and hours a day on this. But yeah, I think that's all, to be honest. Um, I think that is actually all. Um, that's the fire simulation. Uh, this is what it should look like. Oh, uh, there we go. That's the fire. This is actual heat emitting on. Um, and you can do this with different objects, you can use uh, spheres and stuff. So that's about it. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've done a tutorial. If you did enjoy this, hope you enjoyed. And for those concerned about um, when my next upload will be, hopefully by the end of this year. And that does seem like it's a long time when I say that. That's because I've been working on the past edit for maybe a month and a half. So... Um, and I'm not really rushing it. I'm trying to make it as good as possible and I'm trying to set the standards high because I know I can reach this. I know I, uh, I, uh, the quality of content that I make can be a lot better and it shouldn't just be me throwing footage and keyframing it, adding in color correction and then rendering it out and be like, hey, here's a cool song with a cool visuals and I hope you guys enjoy it. I want it to be really good and that's why I'm spending a lot of time on it. Um, yeah, I don't really wanna, I don't wanna show too much, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Ooh, you also, you can go and uh, color correct it in like After Effects and then you can get this really nice fire effect. Um, the reason why it seeps in and stuff here is because I spent more time on um, the extrude, the caps, I spent more time playing around with caps and seeing how the fire simulation interacts with the actual object and that's why that's YouTube, that's KSI, uh, that's why it came out uh, looking this way. So yeah, uh, felt like there was something I wanted to show you on the internet but I don't think there is. So if you guys enjoyed, uh, I don't think there's anything else to say. So I'm just going to awkwardly say goodbye and cheers.